At Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the home of America's elite 18th Airborne Corps, there lies an area commonly known as the Old Division Area. This seldom used section of Fort Bragg with its rows of World War II vintage buildings lies dormant for the majority of the year. For over four decades, as the heat of Southern North Carolina marks the beginning of summer, Army ROTC cadets from throughout the Eastern United States invade the small portion of the past to compete head to head for an Army commission. This dormant area explodes to life as the cadets prepare for the most intensive, challenging, and critical evaluation of their lives, Camp All-American. Camp begins with in-processing, a day of being introduced to Fort Bragg and the camp area, of receiving briefings, filling out forms, ensuring the records are straight, and being issued all the equipment needed for the challenging days ahead. Each cadet is assigned to a platoon of 30 to 40 cadets and remains in that platoon for the entire six weeks of camp. Before training, however, each cadet undergoes an intensive physical exam by the Army doctors at Fort Bragg's Womack Army Medical Center. Only those who are medically qualified are allowed to remain at camp. The rigors of Camp All-American will require and demand that every cadet be in top-notch physical condition. Once in processing is completed and the cadets settle into their units, each regiment participates in an opening ceremony where it formally assumes the colors of an active Army regiment of the 18th Airborne Corps, and by doing so, assumes as well the responsibility to live up to the proud and gallant traditions of that regiment. <laughs> then, the training and evaluation of Camp All-American begins in earnest. The bulk of the training in general military subjects takes place early in the camp cycle through Operation Trailblazer, an eight-day period during which cadets refine their mastery of a wide range of individual skills, the first of which is the Army Physical Fitness Test. The familiar push-ups, sit-ups, and two-mile run. In the heat and humidity of Fort Bragg, cadets realize fully how important the physical conditioning received on campus has been. Principles of map reading and land navigation are critical to leadership. During Operation Trailblazer, cadets refine the skills they've developed on campus and are tested on their ability to perform these vital leadership functions. Cadets also receive an overview of orienteering skills and actually negotiate an orienteering course. Moving as rapidly as possible over the rough terrain, the cadets locate a series of markers. 
29, 28, and then you have 14, then you're 30. Yeah. Because we got right here with just two points. How many? Another hour? Another hour? So you got a I have 54 minutes. Battalion. What I'm going to do today is give you all a quick briefing on one of the latest pieces of technology in Army communication. It's called the Singar's Radio. Communications training focuses on the equipment found in an infantry company, field telephones, multi-channel radios, tactical antennas, and the fundamental skills needed by small unit leaders. We, we are Authenticating, squad, encrypting, transmitting, and receiving. During movement counter mobility and survivability training, cadets learn how to develop obstacle plans to hinder enemy movement and receive hands-on training in mine warfare techniques. Now with the road trader in place, the squad's mission is complete. Nuclear, biological, and chemical protective measures training includes instruction and practical exercises in the use of protective masks and clothing. Exposure to chemical warfare in the NBC chamber improves self-confidence in the equipment designed to allow a soldier to continue to fight, even in a saturated chemical environment. Decontamination procedures and first aid are also highly emphasized. Operation Trailblazer also includes time at the swimming pool, but not for sun, fun, and relaxation. During water survival training, cadets learn how to make expedient flotation devices and how to cope with both expected and unexpected water conditions encountered in tactical situations. A vital but exciting element of Operation Trailblazer is the Field Leaders Reaction Course, or FLRC. Working in squad size groups, cadets encounter 16 challenging situations that require them to devise and implement creative ways to overcome obstacles and difficult missions in a short period of time. Leaders are appointed for each situation and are evaluated on their ability to think, analyze, take charge, use initiative, and influence their team to accomplish the mission. FLRC is about leading, and it is also about following, listening, contributing, obeying orders, and being a team player. Cadets leave FLRC understanding more than ever that teamwork is the squad's key to success. The crowning event of Operation Trailblazer is the much anticipated Recondo course, inching along a tight rope four stories above the Little River, and on command, dropping into the black water below bounding down the 55-foot sheer wall of repelling tower, negotiating 15 obstacles, each designed to take every cadet to the threshold of physical and mental endurance. Confidence, stamina, heart, esprit, and raw gut. Mastery of the deepest interferes. This is Ricondo. <laughs> Following Operation Trailblazer are six days of intensive weapons training called Operation Gunsmoke. 
During gun smoke, cadets must qualify with the Army's basic weapon, the M16 rifle, and conduct crew drills on and fire the M60 machine gun. They learn when and how to use live hand grenades. They learn the complexities of arming, aiming, firing, and disarming the imposing array of infantry direct fire any armor systems, the tow, the dragon, and the law. During Operation Gunsmoke, Camp All-American cadets are instructed on the complexities of calling for and adjusting artillery and mortar fire. Air temperature goes up, the density goes down. So we may be aiming here today to hit this target. I'll tell you exactly what's right. Fire! Number one, stand by. Number one, fire! One, stand by. One, fire. Observing firsthand the power of these weapons in action. Cadets fire tanks and learn how air defense artillery weapons are employed on the battlefield. Bradley fighting vehicle, and then we've got the best tank in the world. The cadets leave Operation Gunsmoke with a much greater understanding of Army weapon systems and the concept of the combined arms team. Okay, okay. Having progressed through the training in basic military subjects and weapons instruction, the cadets now move to the Audie Murphy phase of camp to apply their knowledge and skills in a small unit tactical environment. Audie Murphy is the gateway to tactical leadership training. And from this point on, the cadets will be trained and evaluated in successive tactical leadership positions. This phase begins with individual tactical training, or ITT. This includes instruction in the art of camouflage, individual movement techniques, construction of fighting positions, exercises in battlefield survival, and the fighting spirit of the American soldier at bayonet training. Squad and platoon level tactical training builds on these individual skills. Cohesion and camaraderie are the byword now. The parts begin to form a whole. In buddy teams, squads, and platoons, the cadets face the challenges together, watching out for each other, drawing strength from unity, learning that the capability of a well-oiled team far exceeds the individual capabilities of its members. And through structured after-action reviews following each tactical exercise, learning what they did right and wrong, understanding and evaluating their performance, and becoming wiser and more proficient for their experience, becoming leaders. The logical progression of training from individual to unit level continues in Operation Kit Carson. The advanced tactical training phase of Camp All-American. This phase includes squad and platoon level patrolling as the cadets see how all their technical and tactical skills come together in a small unit combat scenario. They are assigned to a variety of leadership positions and are closely evaluated on their ability to plan, organize, and conduct offensive operations and defensive operations by day and by night. The squad tactical reaction assessment course is one of the major evaluated events at camp.
During this one-day exercise, every cadet serves in a leadership position and is judged on his or her ability to influence and maneuver under great stress in a typical combat situation. The evaluation becomes part of the cadet's formal camp record. The critical process of leadership is not limited, of course, to a cadet's performance in field situations. From the very first day of camp, cadets are rotated through the full range of leadership roles, from squad leader to company commander. Their platoon tactical officers and NCOs monitor their performance closely and evaluate them face to face, in writing, and in all 16 dimensions of leadership. The final exam for the cadets of Camp All-American is the All-American Challenge, a grueling four-day field training exercise that pushes each cadet to the limit of physical and mental endurance. This capstone exercise is the cadet's final opportunity to validate tactical skills developed during camp, and for the camp cadre to evaluate the cadet's leadership potential. With little time for sleep or food, the cadets go hard for four days and nights of simulated combat. All-American Challenge pits one platoon against the other. Offensive and defensive patrols, air assault operations, raids, and road marches. It's the ultimate test of the cadets' ability to make sound and rapid decisions under pressure, to work together as a team, to accomplish a mission, to endure to prove that they have the right stuff to be our Army's next generation of leaders. Camp All-American is about training and about evaluating, but it's also an opportunity for cadets to learn about the Army they will soon enter as commissioned officers. During Branch Orientation Day, cadets find out firsthand through briefing and comprehensive displays about the wide array of branches to choose from in the officer corps. For an entire day, cadets are given a chance to hear about the functions and browse among the equipment used by all 16 officer branches. Despite the intensity, the weeks of training and evaluation pass quickly. The capstone run, led by the commanding general, marks the cadets' last full day at camp. The five-mile run brings the cadets and the staff together for the last time. The goal is for the entire regiment to finish the five-mile run together. The official conclusion of the great adventure in leadership is heralded by a closing ceremony. At the end of their six weeks at Fort Bragg, the cadets of Camp All-American stand tall, fit, and proud. As they pass in review, the cadets render and receive a final salute and tribute for having proved through their outstanding performance at Camp All-American that they indeed have the right stuff to serve our soldiers, our army, and our nation as commissioned officers. And having crossed a major challenge on the road to the coveted bar of gold, they retire the colors of the regiment they have served so well. Dismiss! <laughs>having completed six weeks of the most challenging and demanding training of their lives, cadets depart Camp All-American with an aura of confidence, pride, accomplishment, and self-discipline. They feel the satisfaction of seeing a challenge, accepting the challenge, and most importantly, accomplishing the challenge. The 24-carat challenge of going for the gold, the gold of a second lieutenant in the United States Army, and a lifelong commitment to mission first and people always.